Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the main interview room here, post game at the Final Four. We're going to welcome in just a few moments Purdue head coach Matt Painter advancing to the championship game and Purdue student athletes Zach Eady, Fletcher Lawyer, and Lance Jones. Following their 15-minute interview period down here, we're going to have Kevin Keats, the head coach of NC State, with DJ Horn and at least other one at least one other NC State student athlete. All other student athletes are available in the locker room as soon as the coach leaves. We'll try to keep you guys updated as to when locker rooms open and close from here. I'm reliant on a group text, like many of us are. Uh, so we'll find out from the group text when locker rooms open and close. I'll try to keep everybody updated on that. Advancing teams first tonight, teams that are not advancing second. Uh, we'll get some box scores down here as well, and we'll get those distributed as soon as they're available. The Purdue locker room is now open. The official opening time was 5.15. Just so everybody has a chance to follow this along, the structure for these post-game news conferences are the head coach makes an opening statement. We then, we then take questions for student athletes for five minutes. No questions for the coach at that time. After five minutes, the student athletes go back to the locker room so they can meet with other members of the media during the open locker room period. The head coach will stay with us for another eight minutes from there. So head coach makes a statement questions for the student athletes, and then questions for the head coach after the student athletes head back to the locker room. Again, Purdue locker room is open now. We'll let you know when it closes. We got some box scores coming in here. Can I have a couple for the dais up here? That'd be great. Thank you. Please take a moment to silence your cell phone. Please refrain from using any flash photography and no video recording during this session as well. Purdue has arrived. Congrats, folks. Thank you. Just mine here. That's you. We're joined now by Lance Jones, Fletcher Lawyer, Zach Eady, and head coach Matt Painter from Purdue. We'll ask Coach to open things up with a statement, then we'll take questions for student athletes first. Coach. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, very competitive game. I, I thought um, both teams' defense was way better than their offense. Um, I think especially in the second half, I thought our guys did a really good job defending in the second half. With that being said, I thought NC State, you know, holding us to 28 points in the second half did a good job also. Um, it was just one of those grinder type games where, you know, we made a few more shots and then made enough threes and um, obviously wanted to keep establishing Zach inside and uh, kind of playing off of that in terms of they were doing some different things with him and just making the right decision and then being able to attack at that point or take the threes that we were given. But um, we made enough of those. But I, I thought our defense was, was really good in the second half. We didn't have any breakdowns. We had... In my opinion, we had too many breakdowns um, in that first half defensively. Anytime we had those breakdowns with that one stretch, it seemed like they scored. So, but I thought we were very competitive, that we played hard. We just didn't play great. I don't think either team played great. You know, if you kind of look at their run to get here and our run to get here, both teams were way better offensively than you saw today. But that happens in basketball at times. So you got to give our guys credit for hanging in there and grinding one out. Really, we've grinded it out the last two games. Um, but, you know, when it's freewheeling and you're scoring the basketball, it's more enjoyable to watch. It's more enjoyable to play. It's more enjoyable to coach. But to win a championship and get six games and be able to win six games, you're going to have a couple games in there, a game or two, to where you just don't play as well offensively. And you got to find a way to win that. So congrats to our guys for finding a way to do that. First question for the student athletes is going to come in the front row. Second chair in. Hand the microphone to to your left. Thank you. 
Uh, hey guys, uh, Arash Mandani from Sportsnet Canada. Zach, you made the decision to come back uh, this year to now be one win away, one game away playing Monday night means what to you at this at this point? Yeah, I mean, this, this game is what we've been talking about all year. Um, it's the reason I came back is playing games like these. Um, you know, I, really the reason I've been playing college basketball for four years. Like, we talk about this every year, and, and to finally get to this game um, is it, big time. And then we got to obviously keep going and keep playing. Um, but, yeah, the, these are the games you, you come back for, and these are the games that you, you play for, and you work and you practice every day for. Continuing with questions for the student athletes up front, Zach. Uh, Zach Brazil, you're a post for Zach and Fletcher. Could you just, you know, describe what it feels like to be in the title game after obviously last year losing in the first round to <coughs> come back and now, you know, kind of bury those demons, obviously, and to be 40 minutes for winning it all. We'll ask Fletcher to take that first, then Zach. Fletcher. Uh, it's everything. It's everything we've worked for, everything we've thought about, a lot of, a lot of late nights. Can't even sleep because you're thinking about it. It's, um, it's been tough, but we fought, and uh, we're going to keep fighting. we got 40 more minutes till we're national champs, so uh, we're going to push everybody as, as far as we can, and we're going to play as hard as we can. And Zach. Yeah, um, like you said, it's, it's a really big deal, but uh, obviously we still have, we still have a, game, a game to play. Um, uh, like no one, no one's celebrating right now. We're we're gonna keep locked in, and keep um, keep focusing on these games plans, and uh, get back to work. Up front on the left side, Fanta. I'll go to Lance with this one, John Fanta, Fox Sports. Lance, as Coach said, this wasn't always the the prettiest game. Uh, you supplied some big time shots for your team in this one, but what does it say about this team? that maybe when it's not the most glamorous game, you guys can still outwill the other team with your defense and with your toughness? Yeah, uh, it says a lot about our team. Um, you know, every, every win is not going to be, you know, nice and pretty. Um, this one happened to be grinded out. Uh, you know, we stuck with it. You know, they made runs. Uh, we had dead periods, but most importantly, we, we, we stayed with it, and, you know, we got necessary stops down the stretch. Toward the back of the room in the center. Kevin Sweeney, uh, Sports Illustrated for for Lance and Fletcher. Um, you know the confidence that you guys elevated on on some of those threes, especially in the second half, to, to put them away. Uh, I'm curious, maybe what that says about the personality of this group and the way that you guys uh, believe in yourselves in these big moments. We'll ask Lance to take that first, then Fletcher. Lance. Yeah, um, I think it just it's about repetition. I, mean, I know me and Fletcher, we get in the gym extra. Uh, we shoot after bad games, after good games. The work stays the same. Um, you know, we don't, we don't want to shy from moments like this. You know, we worked our whole lives to be in this position. And um, I think it's just about having confidence. And uh, I, I can speak for me and my, my uh, Fletcher that we have a lot of confidence right now. And Fletcher? Yeah, we've just done too much to not shoot it with confidence. Um, <laughs> it's been, we've played basketball for so many years. Now we're on the stage that we've worked for. This is uh, why we play. And uh, there's, there's no reason for us to go out there non-confident or not trusting one another to go make a play. Up front to the left, second row. Yeah, um, Adi Joseph, CBS. Uh, Zach, you played 40 today. Did you expect to play 40 today? And what's it going to take to come out of the title game? Um, I don't know if I expected it, but I was ready for it. I'm going to be ready for it every game. Um, like, it's, like, I, like I've said all, um, all weekend now, like you never want to come up the game. Like No one on the team wants to come up the game. Um, obviously, if paint subs us, we're going to sub. But if you can play every minute of the game, you want to play every minute of the game. You want to play every second of the game. Um, so I'm never going to complain about uh, paint leaving me on the floor. Final question for the student athletes before they go back to the locker room up front. Uh, Zach, they uh, seem like they brought a lot of different looks to you. Had some turnovers that are kind of uncharacteristic and such. But uh, when how how did you handle try to handle what they were doing with you defensively? Yeah, they, they threw a lot of different looks at me. Um, I have to kind of be more, be more ready for it. I think I tried to force it a few times, and that led to some bad um, offensive possessions for us. Uh, but obviously, kind of just when they when they keep going, you kind of get the rhythm and you get the flow and you understand it. And I think in, towards the end of the game, there you kind of kind of picked it up and I kind of understood what they were doing and uh, we kind of made that run there. We want to thank Lance Fletcher and Zach for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to head back to the locker room and join their teammates. The Purdue locker room remains open, and we're going to take questions for Coach Painter. Let's begin up front with Adam. Hey, Matt! Congratulations. 
AdamZagoriaNJ.com. Just, I guess, after losing the last few years to double-digit seeds, how satisfying is this for you and your guys? And uh, you know, what does it mean in the light of what's happened? I mean, obviously, if you look at their their run and who they've beaten, you know, Duke, Marquette, obviously Oakland beat, um, you know, Kentucky. They beat a good Texas Tech team that got third in the Big 12. Um, you know, pretty impressive run. You know, so for us to be able to beat them, no matter what their seed is, I think they prove that they belong. And the thing that we just tried to sell more than anything is that we weren't facing that team that was 17 and 14 at one time. We're facing the team that's 9 and 0. But um, just getting a win without any of the particulars is, is worth it, right? To be able to advance. And um, I always talk about that about trying to win a Big Ten championship. So everybody like wants to talk about winning it. And I said, man, you got to get yourself in position before you can win one. And so it's like winning a national championship. Like you can talk all you want, but if you're not gonna play on Monday, you don't have a chance. And so obviously we put ourselves in a position, you know, to win one and, you know, you gotta give our guys credit, man. Our guys have been able to battle back, but they've also, you know, been, been able to handle a lot of adversity. Up front to the right, Arash. Hey Matt, Arash Medania from Sports Canada. It, it was interesting after the Elite Eight, all the emotion, all the joy, Robbie Hummel, Zach with the explosion. Today you punch your ticket to Monday night. It was so much more muted from the guys. What, what does that tell you about the yeah. mindset that they have going into this and, and just the dichotomy kind of from last Sunday to tonight? Yeah, you know, we didn't, we talked about not getting caught up, you know, and not jumping over the fight and being able to compete and keep our composure. And, you know, it's when you deal with a team that's a good shooting team, Sometimes, like when they miss shots, it's like the end of the world. Like, how can I miss shots? Like, how can I do this? Um, we're we, the number one three-point field goal percentage team in the country. So sometimes our body language, just if we miss shots, we can still win the game. You know, and obviously you want to make those shots, right? It just kind of depends on how the game flows. But, yeah, it was pretty emotional to, to go through that. But every team who's playing has to be, you know, has to go through that. You know, you had one team that's been through it. They are national champs. And so they, they have that experience where the rest of us do not have that experience. So, you know, you don't want to be emotional at that time and then not go out there and play and play to your strengths. And I thought our guys did a good job handling that. We're going to go to the center of the room. Hey, Matt, Mark McClune, 3TV CBS 5 here in Phoenix. Hey, wondering, you mentioned the offense not being uh, what you'd hoped it would be. Um, given the, the sight lines and just the amount of people inside the arena, how much of an effect do you think that had on just the offensive flow? I, I don't think it had any effect on it. I, I thought, um, you know, we had a couple over and back turnovers, like just, you know, constant, just, just a couple of concentration turnovers. We dribbled into traffic a couple times. Zach was loose with the basketball. You know, you, you, we work a lot with him on a crouch dribble just because he's so damn big. You know, that ball's coming up high if he's standing straight up. And then, you know, he let Middlebrooks, you know, poke it from behind. But um, I also think a lot of it had to do with NC State. I think they're a good defensive team. I think they put a lot of pressure on the basketball. They make it tough on you. But I, I didn't think the environment um, had anything to do with that. I thought it was NC State's defense and at times our lack of concentration. Coach, to move up front, front row, Zach. Zach Brazil in your post. Matt, I, I'm sure you've been asked this a lot, but what – what characteristics do you think you guys have that's enabled basically the same team to rebound the way you have this year right. after last year? Yeah, you know, we, um, we've added some pieces. Lance Jones is a piece that's really helped us. I thought his defense tonight on DJ Horn was really good. You know, the moment wasn't too big for him. You know, he took the shots that were there for him and, and be able to knock them down. So the addition of that, you know, we got the best player in the country. You know, it's a hell of a place to start, right? So, like, a lot of times people are congratulating you, and it's like, you know, he's pretty damn good. But you got to have the right pieces with him from a skill standpoint and then still be able to guard elite players. And I think we're just better in those areas. Like, we had guys step up tonight and shoot the – like, us going 10 for 25, that's our average. We, we, we shoot 40% from three. So, like, now if we can have games where we can get more and then shoot a better percentage, you know, you know that really helps him. You know, we got to do a better job of helping him. He turned it over tonight. Braden turned it over tonight. So we didn't give ourselves a great chance there. And that's what you want. You want that complete game, you know, and I think that's where we've been able to adjust. We haven't turned the ball over as much, even though tonight we had more than 13. So we're now 7-4 and four 
when we have 14 to 17 turnovers, but we're 27 and 0 when we have 13 or less. So like getting that, keeping that number down, and why you got to like jump on that and like you know have such a magic number, but doesn't mean we can't win when we have more than 13. But so far we haven't gotten beat when we've had 13 or less. Up front to the left, Fanta. Matt John Fanta, Fox Sports. Zach Eady uh, has become the first player in the NCAA tournament's history to have 20 and 10 while shooting at least 60% from the floor in five games in a single tournament. Uh, a lot of times on this stage, we sometimes see the best of the best players could get phased or could get rattled. Right. It feels like nothing does that to him. What are you just continually seeing from this person? Right. Well, I thought they did a good job tonight. I thought they battled him. They pushed him out some. They made it difficult on him. They forced him into five turnovers. But he still got to his spots. You know, and if he can get to his spot for his jump hook or he can get it at the rim, like he didn't have a lot of dunks, kind of easy ones tonight. He had to earn almost everything, whether he was going to his left hook or his right hook. And, and just continue to play and continue to compete. But it, it's really about running things and getting in that position. If he can get there, he's had a lot of success. It doesn't guarantee he will, but the, the numbers kind of show that once he gets there and gets settled, he's, he's been pretty successful. On the left side, Jerry. Hi, Jerry Palm, CBS. Braden Smith obviously had a very rough first half, didn't hit any shots, turned the ball over a lot. What kind of adjustments do you make at halftime with him to try and get him back on track? Yeah, not really adjustments as much as just try to be encouraging, you know, to tell him, like, you know, two of those turnovers are over and backs. Like, he hasn't done that the whole year. So, like, you don't know if it's just, like, you've got jitters or the anxiety a little bit of just, you know, being out there. But, you know, to me, you, you can't dribble across half court and stop, right? You, have, you can't go the other way. And so right as you're two feet and the ball gets across half court, like, you know, and so he's a you know quintessential point guard. He runs the show for us. So just trying to, you know, get him in with good spirits and just like, hey, go out and play your game. Do like when we run stuff, just like be aggressive. Like look for your shot, keep shooting, and um, but no adjustments really. Obviously, he didn't turn the ball over the second half. You know, so that was good, and we rely a lot on him. So when he has he has a little bit of struggles, it's easier for him to get out of it because he stays out there. He plays through his mistakes. I want to congratulate Coach Painter, and thank you, Coach, for joining us here in the main interview room. See you back again tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hoops in the house. We'll be joined in just a moment by head coach Kevin Keats from NC State and student athletes DJ Burns and DJ Horn. NC State's locker room is open and will be open till just about 6 p.m., 5.57, 6 p.m. They're open right now. Just a reminder, while joining us here in the main interview room, please refrain from any video recording, any flash photography. We will take a statement from Coach Keats, questions for the student athletes, and then questions for Coach Keats when the NC State players go back to the locker room. NC State has arrived.
We're joined at this time by NC State head coach Kevin Keats and student athletes DJ Burns and DJ Horn. The remaining NC State student athletes are available in the locker room. We're going to ask coach to provide an opening statement. Then we're going to take questions for DJ and DJ. Well, first of all, congratulations to uh, Purdue. Obviously, I thought they played a really good game and um, it's a really good basketball team. They do a good job. They can score the ball inside and out. Um, you know, I thought we had a great game plan coming in. Um, I thought they made some shots. And um, I think one of the, our biggest differences is some of the shots that we normally make, uh, we didn't make in the, in the game and, and certainly um, kind of got away from us a little bit. But I don't know that I could be more prouder of uh, a group of men that I've ever coached in my life. Um, adversity, you name it. Um, situations, you name it. Hard times, you name it. And they found a way to win the ACC. They found a way to make it to the Final Four. And so we're going we're gonna to leave out of here because Purdue won the game. But we will walk out here with our heads up as champions and um, you know what we've been able to provide and um, the memories that these guys have um, created for NC State basketball, but more importantly for themselves, for the rest of their lives. And um, these guys are champions, they're ACC champions, and so I'm proud of them. You know, starting with the older guys, um, DJ Burns and DJ Horn and Casey Morsell, and um, just so proud of what they have poured into this university and also into our basketball uh, program. So. Um, Grateful for them, um, excited that, you know, what we've done and what they've been able to do. And um, like I said, we're going to leave out here, you know, with our heads up. Thank you, Coach. We're looking for questions for DJ Horn and DJ Burns. If you have a question for either of the NC State student athletes, please raise your hand and state your name and media outlet and your question. Brett Friedlander, SaturdayRoad.com. This is for DJ Horn. Was it just one of those nights where the ball wasn't going in, or was there something that Purdue did defensively that really kind of took you guys out of your rhythm? Uh, I think it was just one of those days um, where the ball just wasn't bouncing our way. Um, you know, looking back at it, I, I can't really remember everything that went on in the game, but uh, just off the top of my head, I know we didn't make uh, shots out of high clip. We're going to go all the way back and all the way left. Hey, DJ Horn, Jake Seymour, WCSN. Uh, I just kind of reflect on your college career, obviously, changing schools, kind of working your way up to this point. Just what are some of the key takeaways you take away, especially, you know, this season, walking away as ACC champions and getting to the stage? Yeah, you know, this season was definitely um, a great one, whole career, looking over it. You know, it's been a long journey. I'm grateful for everything that, you know, has been thrown my way. And, uh, you know, to end it with this magical run that I, you know, went on with me and my teammates, and um, to have an ACC championship, you know, didn't get the big one, but, you know, it's definitely a big accomplishment in my career. We're going to go to the center of the room, fourth row. This one's for DJ Horn, uh, Chaz Messman, KYMA TV. DJ, obviously you played the last two years at ASU, but what did it feel like tonight playing back here in the Valley? Um, yeah, it felt good, you know, being able to play basketball anywhere at any time always feels good but um to know that I was back in Arizona felt felt a little bit of love and everything just from you know old fans and everything like that so it's pretty cool continuing with questions for NC State's student athletes Zach Zach Brazil New York Post for uh, DJ Burns what what was it like going up against Edie and was there to finally after watching on film and experience was it different than you expected was there any surprises uh, no, sir. I um, think I didn't do as good of a job in the first half, keeping him from getting to that right hand. And um, he's a tall guy. If you let him get to his spots, he's going to make shots. And, you know, we clean it up, but it was a little too late. Next question, same area, right up front. Dennis Cox, WRL in Raleigh. Uh, for both DJ uh, Burns and Horn, uh, the impact that you guys have made on NC State uh, with this run that you guys have made, speak to that. How... how how much uh, fun has this journey been for you guys? I know it didn't end the way you wanted to, but the impact that you guys have had on campus. Yeah, it's been fun, you know, every step of the way, every win that we've gotten, it's felt like a championship. Um, to see all the joy and the happiness that it's brought, you know, our, our university, our city and everything, how many people got behind us, not just from NC State, but the whole country, it just shows, you know, when you come together, and, you know, stick together, you know, what you can do as a team. And uh, I'm just, you know, grateful that I was a part of it all. DJ Burns. Man, um, 
uh, man, just to be a part of this has been everything I could have asked for, man. Um, didn't go to where we wanted to go out, but man, this has been an experience like no other. It's something, you know, that I've wanted my whole life. And to be able to do it with the group of people that we have is just amazing, man. And um, the city, we're just glad we could bring the culture back to Raleigh and um, bring it back for state fans, man. They've been waiting for a long time, and I hope we give them something to, you know, build up for the next year. On the left side in the fourth row. This one's for DJ Horn, Blake Demon, son of a source. Um, DJ, how meaningful was this final year at NC State for you and to represent your hometown and get them to this point of the Final Four? Um, it meant everything um, to come home, for Coach Keys to give me this opportunity to go out there and make all these memories with my brothers the way we did. Um, I don't think I could have drew it up any better. Um, I mean, obviously, if you won the whole thing, it would have been a story. But, um, you know, I'm grateful for this experience. You know, not everybody gets to say they went to the Final Four, um, but, you know, NC State did. This will be the final question for DJ Burns and DJ Horn, left side up front. All right. Adi Joseph, CBS. Uh, DJ Horn, um, talk about the first half. Raiden Smith was a little bit off. He looked uh, maybe not quite on this game, Matt Painter was saying. Did you sense that you could take advantage there from a matchup perspective? Was it, were you comfortable? I mean, going into the game, um, we knew that, you know, Zach Eady was going to be the emphasis of our game plan. So uh, we just wanted to try to take the guards out as much as we could to not have it be a, you know, a two-force punch. And um, I think, you know, we did that. Um, you know, the whole team did a good job on that. Um, you know, he's a great player, and to see him, you know, kind of struggle tonight, that it has to be a credit to what we did. We want to thank and congratulate DJ Horn and DJ Burns on a Final Four run after being ACC champions. They're going to head back to the locker room, which is open for another 14 or so minutes for questions with NC State student athletes. We'll take questions for Coach Keats at this time. We're going to start on the left side at the column with Aaron. Aaron Beard with the AP. Kevin, with, with Michael's hamstring issue, it felt like it was one of those things where you guys had played a certain way, balance, all the pieces fitting together. Did things just kind of get out of sorts a little bit there in that regard of rotations and all the confidence and everything you guys had built to this point? Well, when, when Michael's injury occurred, it definitely changed us. Um, it made us go back to Horn handling the ball a little bit more than we wanted to. I thought uh, Breon came in and did a good job for us. Uh, that being said, you know, when we've been playing seven or eight guys and one of your key guys go down, it certainly changes you a lot. And it, it changed us. And when we were different, um, you know, he's our, our leading assist guy, so we didn't really have anyone that could create for someone else. Coach, we're going to go to the left side, to the left of the aisle. Uh, Richard Smith, uh, independent news media here in Arizona. You laid out in the beginning of the conference just how special this team is and how unique it is what it's done is. Do you think, though, in this era of college basketball, you're going to start seeing more teams like this where a lot of guys come into the program? And, you know, what struck me watching this team, it wasn't a Cinderella team. It was a talented team that figured out how to play together. Um, do you think that's the start of, you know, kind of a, a movement in college basketball? And what does it say about these guys that, they learned how to use each other's talent so well before it was too late. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's a movement. I think, you know, if you can get five new guys, or in my case, eight new guys to blend in with the, um, the guys who are returning, I think you've got something there. And it, it takes a little longer, but it's, it's so much work into the chemistry, both on and off the court, to get here. Like, they have to trust. They've got to believe. They've got to believe in the staff. Um, most time, when you get a, a lot of transfers, they become in. They come in as independent contractors, and if you can get them to work for the company, uh, being NC State and playing for NC State, then it usually works out in your favor. And we were able to do this. Everybody won't. Um, there, there are some teams that have just as many transfers as we we have, but we're not able to connect the way we did. And. Like, the way we connected is unbelievable. Like, if you, if you had a chance to hang around with these guys all day, you'd be like, man, these guys are fantastic. And, I mean, they were, you know, we went about our business, but we, ha we had fun. They, they genuinely liked each other and wanted to see each other be successful. Coach, we'll go up front to the right side. Charlie Grill, 24-7 Sports. Coach, I know the emotions of the game is still kind of raw, but talk about what a run like this does for your program moving forward. 
Well, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, you think about, you know, I, I, we, we have a story. And when you're, when you're in any sports, you want to have a story. Look at our story. I mean, this is, the way this story was written was unbelievable because we've had, in, in order to win any championships, you've got to have highs and lows. We started the season with great highs. In the middle, there were some lows, um, but equally some highs then. And then at the end, regular season, there were lows. But look, look what, what this, that this team was able to accomplish. Um, I, I sit back and I just don't know how you can win nine elimination games. And um, I think all of those nine games – and we only had one of them that was um, not a double-digit when we got in the NCAA tournament. There wasn't a double-digit win. And these guys always believed they trusted. Even when we didn't have any uh, – we weren't having success, you know, they believed in me. They believed in the staff, and uh, they stuck together, and they shut out all the outside noise with, you know, the Internet and everything else and, and came out as champions. Yeah. Coach up front to the left side. Kevin, piggybacking on that question, how much does the exposure, the run of you know, people seeing you guys cut down nets, how, how does that change the trajectory of your, your program moving forward? I mean, recruiting and, and, and all those other dynamics. Well, I hope, it, I, hope, I, I hope people understand that we have a heck of a, a basketball program and um, we, we play a unique style and we've got a great culture. You know, what's not talked about enough is – and we've had five teams in the last couple of years get in the tournament. We're one that's been two years in a row. Like, it's almost forgotten because we didn't have – we didn't make a run last year. But this is back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments where our league is so good and we're not getting the respect that we deserve. So, in two years where we've got five, we've been one of the five a couple of years. And I think the run will help and, um, you know, people understanding this. But it, it's also special for, you know um, – graduates and the current student body and, you know, folks that remember the, the great run with 83. I mean, when you sit back and look at, it, look at what we've done, man, you're going to be amazed at it, you know, as you go through it. Like, this, is a, this doesn't happen every day. Like, you know, how many people do you know finish their run at 9-1, and one, winning nine games and then obviously losing the, the last one? I think before this, uh, the only other team that had won more games than us was UConn. Yeah. Any further questions for Coach Keats? All right, Coach, we'd like Thanks to thank you, you for coming down, and congratulations ACC title and Final Four run.